I left my dog in the car to run in and get something, and this gentleman decided to break my two windows, and now he won't leave because he said the police are supposed to be coming, and he's harassing them. Ooh, my man smashed two of her windows because she left her dog in the back of a hot car while she went in to get groceries? Good. What's the first thing you do when you get in your car on a hot day? You stop, no, please. no, I'm not. You roll your windows down. No, but seriously, just crack the fucking window. If you crack the window a little bit, they can stick their snout out. They can get a little fresh air. Probably not advisable anyways, but you keep them shits roll all the way up on a hot day and a passerby sees that shit, they're going to elbow that window so damn fast. You know that in this country, people love animals more than they love humans. No one gives a fuck about your car, your Subaru. They're worried about the animal in the back of that car. This restaurant has the worst service ever. I went to Karen's Diner and this is how my night went. You want just get on my face. Do you want a menu here? Oh just my god. <laughs> <laughs> I have to look like you have fucking three followers. What about me? It's fucking coming. Wait, what's hurt? Take a chip and piss off. Oh, the bed. <laughs> so if your idea of fun involves burgers and getting roasted, check out Karen Steiner in Top Ride. Crazy neighbor Karen and her workers part one. Hey guys. Cops were called. What you doing here? This has to come off my property. What is on your property? All this, I own all the way up. I'm sorry, this lady here, she has, um, I've had a lot of issues with her. And so anything 21.5 feet from the edge of the driveway to here is all my property. And you guys can't put anything on my property. We're going to court over property disputes. She's called the law on me for just mowing my own grass like eight times. I'm sorry, I know it's an inconvenience, but it's just, she's been horrible to deal with. I roast marshmallows, she calls the law. Please don't put them on there or I'm gonna call, I'll have to call the police. Okay. Here comes Karen. The easement gives you access. Okay, I will. Okay, easement gives you access not to change anything or store anything on my property. Yes, it is. Do you know what an easement is? Yes, I do. Okay, 
it gives you access. It doesn't give you ownership. And you cannot, it specifically says you cannot change the anything. Okay, I'll call the officers also. I am confiscating this. That's my welcome act. Leave your poop at the door? That's not what it says. That is inappropriate language when there's an elementary school down the street. Are you filming me right now? Yeah. Put me on Facebook. Go ahead. Should have seen me this morning. I almost felt like crying. I just did cry because I didn't know how I was going to cope moving from one place to the other. Are you a Nikki fan? What? Am I a Nikki fan? Pull up in the Sri Lanka. Pull up in the monster with a mafia gangster with a bad bitch that came from Sri Lanka. Yeah. Get out of the yard. Get out of our yard. I will be calling the police. This yes, it is. No, it does not. This belongs to them, right? Get out of our yard. Um, excuse me. Hi, yeah, what's up? Only people who work here are allowed behind the counter. Do you work here? Oh, yeah, I do. I've been at college. This is my first day back. And how long have you worked here? Almost three years. Oh. Okay, so I won't have to train you or anything, right? Nope, I know this place like the back of my hand, so I will be good to go. Okay. A few minutes later. Um, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just making a caramel latte. Was there something you needed? Well, that's not how we make it here. Oh, yeah, it is. No, it's not. I would know. I've been here three years. This is the way that we're supposed to make it. How how do you think we're supposed to make it? Um, the way I do it is I take the cold milk and then I add caramel to it um, and mix that together and then steam that while the espresso is going and then pour all of it into a cup. Okay, well, I'm not saying you're wrong, but the way I learned how to do it is you take the caramel and the espresso and you mix that together because the espresso is hot and it melts and dissolves the caramel. And then you steam the milk and you put it all together. That's the way I learned it. Okay, I've been here three months. I know how to do something and that's not the right way to do it. Again, you don't have to train me. Um, I know how to do this and this way works for me. If your way works for you, that's great, but that way won't work for me personally. Whatever. Thank you for calling the place I used to work at. This is Jillian. How can I help you? What are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm on the phone. Yeah. Yeah, we can definitely get that for you. Okay. You have a great day too. Bye-bye. What are you doing? That is not how you answer the phone. What? Well, first of all, that's way too long of an introduction. The customer obviously knows where they're calling. So all you have to say is, hello, this is Adelaide. Um, all you have to say is your name. That's it. Okay, I hope that works for you, but for me that's not going to work because I've had people in the past who literally have called us and realized it's the wrong number after I've said, hey, this is the place I work at. If I just say, this is Jillian, there's no indication of that. Well, it works for me, and that's great, but I'm not doing that. You say you've worked here three years, but you don't know how to do simple tasks. I don't understand. And I don't need you to act like my boss because you have only worked here three months and you have no idea what you're doing. So if you will please leave me alone so I can do my job the way I was taught to do it and you can keep doing the way you're doing it, okay? Ah, don't care. This is a continuation from the Eric story time. So I found him in the back once again and I gave him a more stern talking to and I was like, hey, one, you cannot clock out without a manager's permission. You have to have a manager clock you out. And number two, if you leave your zone, you have to have someone taking over. And he looks at me and he goes, well, I'm off. It's two, I'm off and walks away. The best part about Eric was he would literally go out and sit at a table for hours on end after he was off. So him needing to get off at a certain time, he would literally just go sit and read a book. So he could stay an extra five minutes if he needed to. But anyway, I digress. So after he starts to walk away, I literally tell him, he can still hear me. I tell him, hey, you know what? You can go ahead and talk to the general manager on Monday. He'll be here. He like looked at me and then just walked away. So after this happens, I then have to go write an email to my general manager, my three co-managers and my district manager saying what had happened because there had already been one instance, which I talked about earlier. And so I had to keep them updated. So as I'm writing this email, the door swings open and it's Eric and he's demanding the general manager's cell phone number. Now, one, I'm not allowed to give out the general manager's cell phone number. And number two, this is a very tiny office and he's literally blocking the door. And I tell him, I'm like, hey, I'm very uncomfortable. You're making me very uncomfortable. I need you to like get out of the office and I will have the general manager call the store so you can talk to him. He tells me that he's not leaving. He's not going to unblock the door and he's going to wait until I call the general manager because he doesn't want me telling lies to the general manager. I tell him again that I'm very uncomfortable and I'm keeping my cool. Obviously there were a lot of things I could have done in this situation like called the police or called 
the store and been like, hey, I need help in the office, you know? But I was just panicking and my brain was panicking, wasn't working. So instead I was just like, hey, I'm very uncomfortable. I need you to get out of the office and I will call the general manager. This goes back and forth for at least 20 minutes. Finally, he slams the door, but watches me through the window. There's like a little window and literally watches me call the general manager. And I have to tell the general manager, hey, I need you to call the store immediately. Long story short, the general manager calls the store, he talks to Eric, and then Eric leaves the building. I, of course, once Eric left the building, started crying. So the general manager then calls me and is like, hey, what happened? I explain what happened, and I didn't tell you guys this earlier, but I tried to get up to leave the office, and he did not let me leave. He literally would not move. So after I talked to the general manager, I then had to call the district manager and tell them what happened. So of course I had to do this all while crying because I was scared shitless um, because of what just happened and because he literally wouldn't let me leave the office. I tried to get up and he wouldn't let me leave. So I then had to finish up my shift, which was another six hours, close the store, and that was that. So the next day I ended up getting a call from my general manager and they said, hey, you don't have to worry about Eric anymore. We gave him all the documentation. He's let go. He is no longer working for us. He doesn't have any other shifts. You are safe. It's okay. Or so I thought. 